Hello YouTubers, this is the Nubifier and welcome to Exposed, a series where I go beyond the standard review and compromise my warranty so that you don't have to. By seeing what components are used and the detail that's put into design and construction, we can quantify quality, durability and value for your money. Each component is going to have its own video to keep things simple. A search for Nubifier Exposed will help you find the other videos in the future. Let's begin. The Verpal Warbird Grip is listed at $100 US, and I used it for two weeks during testing for PTU 3.5. The casting is based on an early F4 grip, and the injected molded polymer is solid. The grip has a diamond pattern on both sides, so that it won't slide out of your hands, and it feels great. Because of the choice of material, there's no hollow resonation when using the trigger. There are no panel gaps or irregularities whatsoever, just like the premium MT50 CM2. To gain access, the Warbird has nothing tricky about it. The grip is held together with very small bolts and cap screws. You're going to need a 2.5mm Allen. It can be taken apart and put back together, providing care is taken to not over torque the screws. Once the screws are removed, the grip splits into two parts. The casting is pretty on the outside and internally, of all the grips to date, Verpal's really stepped up their game here. The metal base unit uses a pair of long bolts to pass through the twist mechanism ensuring it won't ever move. The new circuitry incorporates the mechanical buttons directly soldered to the PCB where possible. Other buttons that are remotely mounted also use this construction, except that wires are used to connect the satellite boards to the main. This is very simple and effective, ensuring that everything is terminated by a plug. Technically, replacement parts could be sent, or the end user with some basic skill could perform self-repair or modifications with ease. Some switches are held in place with hot glue, which brings the overall impression down a notch when compared to other grips but nothing would ever wiggle loose. The Z-axis uses a Hall Effect sensor which operates precisely without any contact. The interior of the casting is great, and the grip went back together with a snap, resulting in the same close tolerance as if it was brand new. Some observations and then the score. The internal layout is full and busy, but sound. This is Verpal's newest released grip, and there's a noticeable evolution in its construction. This might indicate even better level of quality in the future grips. The moving parts like the Z-axis are frictionless magnetic and of a very high quality. The trigger buttons are similar to others in this level and should last forever through millions of clicks. The score in this series has a maximum of 9, allowing for 10 to be given to truly remarkable gear that may stand out in the future. All grips in this series are evaluated at the same weight. Quality of material is 8.5 with solid choices in the plastics and the machine parts have a uniform anodizing. Quality of casting is a 9, easily, without any issues. There's a great feel of density in the grip, the seams are sealed, and the grip snaps together tight even before screws are added. The quality of the electronics is also an 8.5. Verpal tried very hard to evolve its construction techniques and it shows. Both trigger stages return a great tactile click. I found the hat switches are superior in quality and reject unwanted inputs. The small RGB LED has a great uniform glow it can be turned off and it can be dimmed. For engineering though, I have to drop a 7, which is a real shame. As I said, all the hats, triggers and buttons are of a superior quality. The ergonomics are good and the twist is great. The 7 comes because of the lower button, which requires in my opinion too much force to be used easily with a pinky finger. In my review you'll see that I asked a wide range of people to check it out and most of them came to the same conclusion. It's not a deal breaker and some of you may not have any difficulty, I just thought I would point it out. Longevity is a 9. Nothing here has given me the impression that anything would fail during years of normal use. So, the Warbird Grip is a solid performer offering compact size and an awesome Z-axis. If this was sold as a left and right unit, this grip would become a contender for my daily set despite the low button count. And there you go. This is a series of short videos that I will be continuing to work on, so please subscribe and stay tuned. If you don't agree with my evaluation, please let us know in the comments so we can be better informed. Thank you very much for spending your time with me. If you liked the video and got something out of it, please consider sharing it with a friend. Fly safe and I'll see you in the verse.